All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to thank everyone who is joining us today. Welcome to today's CMCF webinar, What End Users Really Recommend for Continuous Delivery. I'm Christy Tan, Marketing Communications Manager at CNCF. I'll be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenter today, Cheryl Hung, Director of Ecosystem at CNCF. Please note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinars page at cncf.io slash webinars. With that, I'll hand it to Cheryl to kick off today's presentation. Take it away, Cheryl. Cool, thank you very much, Christy. I'm excited to be here. So I am Cheryl Hung, I'm the Director of Ecosystem at CNCF. And I'm going to be talking today about a new initiative that I've been working on for a few months. And I think it's really exciting and I hope it will be useful to a lot of different people. So it's called the CNCF Technology Radar. So a little bit about me and what I do at CNCF. So my goal really is to drive the adoption of cloud native technologies like Kubernetes, Prometheus, and the dozens of other projects hosted by the CNCF. And as part of that, I focus primarily on end users. So these are companies and people and teams that are adopting cloud native and making sure that they're successful and they understand how to work with the open source ecosystem. So apart from that, I also founded and run the Cloud Native London Meetup. Um, I've previously been software engineer, developer advocate, DevOps manager. So I've seen the world of cloud native from a few different angles. And you can find me on Twitter at Oi Cheryl. So the CNCF end user community consists of over 140 different companies. And all of these are companies that are somewhere in their journey of adopting cloud native. So as you can see, there is a huge amount of diversity here. Some of these are very small startups. Some are household names, some are enterprises, and they're all approaching cloud native in a slightly different way. And the reason that we have this end user community is because most often we hear from end users that they want to find a company that is doing something similar to them, maybe six or 12 months ahead of them and ask them, what were the decisions that you made? Why did you choose this over that? And would you recommend it or would you suggest something else? So the end user community gets together usually every two weeks or so on online calls to discuss different aspects of cloud native. And unlike a lot of what CNCF does, these calls are private and they're private for a reason. And that's because most of the people within these companies are not allowed to share what they do publicly without getting PR approval or legal approval. So they can have really awesome discussions amongst themselves. So on topics like developer experience or service mesh, but they can't talk about it publicly. So after several years of hearing some of these really great discussions, I wanted to find a way to take these discussions and share them more publicly, but in an aggregated or anonymized way. And that's what this technology radar is. It's a CNCF initiative that's supported from the end user community with the goal to share what tools are actually being used by end users, whether they would recommend them and look at of these 140 odd companies, what patterns do we see? And importantly, to highlight the real world usage of cloud native, because cloud native, even though I work at CNCF, is not just CNCF tools. Companies really do use proprietary, non-open source, non-CNCF projects. And it's incredibly important that we recognize that this is a real, challenge and this is how we're doing cloud native. So in today's webinar, I'm going to talk about what is a technology radar, how it, we've designed and built the first one. And then the first one is going to be on continuous delivery. So I'll share with you the results from these 140 odd companies. 
So to begin, what is a technology radar? So the original technology radar came from a consultancy called ThoughtWorks. They've been building this and using this format for over a decade, since 2010, and it's been adopted by a lot of other companies as well. And this is their latest one, so they publish one per year, and this is what the radar looks like. So the metaphor behind a radar is that things that are in the middle are the most interesting or worth sort of looking at or they're coming up in popularity and as you move further out of the the rings these ones are perhaps some some good recommendations but maybe only for specific use cases and we go as we go further and further out these are the technologies that are fading away or not being used so much nowadays and the thoughtworks model is that this encompasses not just tools, but lots of different things. So some of these might be techniques, they can be platforms, they can be tools, or they can be languages and frameworks. And so this is divided into quadrants. And for example, you can, looking at platforms, since we're in cloud native, you can see that uh, ThoughtWorks has suggested that .NET Core and Istio are maturing or ready to adopt. Um, these projects listed down on the side here are all in the trial phase. Um, this set of projects are in assess. Assess meaning you should consider it if you're looking for a new solution. And hold meaning you should consider doing something else. Um, so in this case, they have node overload. I'm not quite sure what node overload actually means but ThoughtWorks is recommend that you hold on it, okay? And the real key idea is the definitions of what these things mean. So we have here from adopt, trial, assess, and hold. Adopt means we clearly recommend this. We've used it, it's stable, it works well across lots of different teams. Trial says we've used it and we found it successful and we think you should also be looking at this. Assess means we tried it out and we think it's promising maybe for certain use cases, but maybe it's lacking certain features or it's not yet as mature as those that are going to be in trial and adopt. And then the last category is called hold. So hold means we recommend that you no longer do this and instead consider some other options. So the CNCF technology radar is inspired by this model with a few different changes. And I'll show those to you in just a moment. So here are the changes. So the most important one is that this is a community driven initiative. So ThoughtWorks and all of the other companies that are using technology radars are using them to say this is what within our own company we think is important and not important. As this is a community driven one, the 140 odd companies and end user community are the ones who contribute the data and curate it. So the goal is to look broadly across a range of companies rather than from a single company. The second one is that we want to focus on things that are coming up on future adoption. So there's going to be only three rings, and this also simplifies it visually. We'll have assess, trial, and adopt. And then ThoughtWorks has decided to go for uh, 98 items on its most recent radar and publish it once per year. So following, you know, continuous delivery, you could say, we're going to go small and often. So instead of doing 100 items once per year, we're going to do 10 to 20 items once per quarter. And this is for two reasons. One is that cloud native moves really, really fast. 
So if we just left it from one year to another, everything would change. It would just not be fast enough to keep up. The second reason is that means that the, the visual graphic itself is a little bit simpler and easier to understand. We don't need the visual quadrant layout anymore. And so each quarter will focus on a different use case. And the first use case is continuous delivery. So I'm going to talk through the methodology, like how we actually got this data from those 140-ish companies, how we use those to create the final version of the radar, and then show you the actual results, just so that you understand the methodology and the reasoning of why things end up in certain, in certain rings. So to begin with, we started by creating a shared Google Doc. So in this Google Doc, you can see we have a list of continuous delivery items down the left. And each of these companies were asked to add a column for themselves. And for each of these items, state whether within their own company, they consider them ready to adopt, ready for trial, they're being assessed or, or hold. And then if they want to, they can also leave comments to say why they are in this category. If there were projects that they use that were not listed here, they can also add them down on the left hand side. So as this is a Google spreadsheet, you'll note that this is not anonymized within the group. So every company can see within the end user community can see what the results were from other companies. And here are the results that we got. So I've blacked out all of the, the names of the companies. You can see this actually wraps around from here to here because 33 companies told us what they're doing with continuous delivery. And they're color coded so you can see green is adopt, this bluey green is trial, yellow is assess, and red is hold. So once we collected this data, we can look at this by row. So what do companies across the end user community think about specific tools? And then the challenge is to find one or to choose one final level for each tool to end up in that kind of fairly summarizes the range of opinions. And after sorting them, so it's a bit easier to see, this is what I came up with. So the solutions that had the broadest positive consensus went in adopt. So in this case, Flux and Helm both had a, plenty of companies that said they would adopt and a couple that were saying hold, but on the whole, positive consensus. Those that had several positive recommendations, but maybe there were a few that said too many that said hold or just not as much data compared to those in adopt went into trial. And then the area with the most, um, the most differences, they went into assess. So for example, you can see here that some of these just don't have enough data for us to say one way or another. Uh, some of them, for example, you see Jenkins here, obviously Jenkins is widely known, but Jenkins had a lot of companies that had put it on hold. Um, we also see like Spinnaker, also very well known. There were quite a few okay trial and assess votes, but none of the cohort had actually said that they were adopting it. So you can see that assess had the widest variety and the least consensus and adopt had the most positive consensus. This is a little bit where the editorial judgment comes in because you could certainly argue, you know, maybe this level, this set of results should be in here or Maybe they should move between the areas, but this is roughly what, as an editor, 
I think is opinion is fair to those answers. And then the third step in this is to look at the patterns and the themes. So these patterns might include things that were not present and maybe you expected them to be, or they're just somehow otherwise interesting or surprising. And remember that this technology radar is not a, it could never be completely objective, right? It's not the CNTF saying you should do this or you should do that. If a project or a product is not recommended here, it doesn't mean that there was no value to it. It just means that from this particular cohort of companies, from the 177 data points that they had submitted, these were the results that that data reflects. And the idea about doing this on a regular cadence is that these things will change over time. So this is a snapshot of one set of opinions at one point in time. It is never going to be perfect. The point is to spark discussion. Okay, so hopefully now you've understood how the actual methodology behind the radar and how it was created. So what does the final radar look like? All right, so this is it. This is it. So you can see, first of all, this is actually a half radar, a half circle. This is just to make it easier to read, especially on a small screen. And you can read this as Flux and Helm were bro both short showed broad consensus and the widest adoption across these companies, positive recommendations to adopt. Circle CI, Customize, and GitLab fell into trial. So these were mostly positive recommendations, maybe a few against, or maybe just not enough, not as much data compared to the ones that are in adopt. And then you can finally see all of the items that are in assess. And these can be in assess because um, they're too new and there just isn't enough data to make a judgment one way or another. Or it could be that the, there is a very large range of disagreement and large range of opinions. Because I know that people, the first time they see this will go, why is Jenkins in assess? Why, why don't you put Jenkins in trial? Because everybody's heard of Jenkins. And yes, everybody has heard of Jenkins. But if you look back at the, the data that we saw, this row representing Jenkins is the longest one. And this one has the most hold items. So when I was looking at this, I thought, would this set of answers fit in with those next to the ones in trial. And my opinion is it would not be correct to move it to trial just because I felt like everybody's heard of Jenkins. So I put it in assess here and you could certainly disagree with that judgment. Again, that is where editorial opinion comes in. But the, the goal of this is not to say because everybody's heard of this project, therefore it should be higher, or because I don't like this project, it should be lower. Instead, it's a reflection of the actual data that real world companies and people are using. Okay, so this is the technology radar. So now that we have looked at it visually and understand how to read this radar, I'm going to talk about the themes that I was observing as I was reviewing this. So the first one was that companies don't just pick one CD solution and stick to it. A lot of the answers, a lot of the companies had tried anywhere up to 10 options and actually adopted maybe between two to four. And in particular, some of the larger enterprise companies built their own in-house tools and then they open sourced some of the components. So LunaWay has open sourced something called Release Manager, Box for Cube, Cube Applier, 
and StackSets controller from Zalando. So the other thing that I thought was interesting is that none of the public cloud managed options were suggested and listed by the end users. This could be because there is an actual preference for running your CD solutions in-house, or it could just be a reflection of the options and the features that were available a few years ago when these companies were choosing what solution to use. The second thing that I saw is Helm is not usually considered a CD tool. It's usually considered a package manager, but a lot of companies have found Helm very useful and successful as part of their overall CD solution. So that's why Helm actually ends up in Adopt. Thirdly, Jenkins. So as I said before, Jenkins had by far the largest number, the absolute number of responses. But several of the companies commented that while they used it for existing deployments, they were no longer recommending it for future applications, for new applications. And instead, they were looking for a cloud native first option. So if you are somebody who is looking for a new CD solution, you should consider Jenkins, but you should at the same time consider other tools that are supporting modern concepts like GitOps. And that is why Flux has ended up also in the adopt phase. So again, remember that this is June 2020. This is the snapshot in time as it is today. If you were choosing a continuous delivery solution, what would you recommend to other people? And from the 33 companies that responded, this is what they're recommending. Okay. So that was the technology radar. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, these are the CNCF projects that were mentioned, Helm, Argo, and Flux, worth taking a look. And we also have case studies, which are focused on continuous delivery. So you should go to this link to check out the Babylon Health CD, CICD case study, and similarly for Intuit. Okay, so what is next? So first of all, I really hope that you found it interesting and it sparks some discussions and sparks your own opinions and thoughts. What did you find surprising? What did you expect? And what are things that you expected to see, but they weren't there? And I'd love to hear what you think about it. And if you have feedback, how can we make this more valuable? Or what are things that we should be doing or shouldn't be doing for this? Then please email any thoughts to info at cncf.io. The goal of this is to make it useful and valuable to the, to the community of people who are adopting cloud native. So we're really keen to hear from you. So as I said, we're publishing this on a quarterly cadence. The next one is going to be in September, 2020. So between now and September, 2020, if you have an opinion about what a particular use case or you want to learn about some, see what end users recommend for a scenario, then you should go to this link and that will redirect you to a GitHub issue where you can add your own suggestions, vote up, vote down. So examples of these might be security, what are end users thinking about or using for security, what are they doing for storage? What runtimes are they using or runtime tools? And what serverless tools they're using? Or this could be something different. For example, this could be what is financial services using for cloud native? So the, the final choice will be made by the editors, but 
we'd love to get your thoughts and your votes. And lastly, as I said before, this data is shared within the end user community. So if you are an end user, if you're adopting cloud native and you want to find out exactly who is using each project, read the detailed comments that they left alongside them, then please join the end user community. You can go to this link to find out how. And then for future tech radars, the, the target is for those to be created, curated, and the themes to come from representatives of the end user community. So we'll select five companies out of the 140 at random to review the data, the answers that came in and give their thoughts as actual end users on what the final radar should look like. Thank you very much. I hope you found this interesting. These slides are also available on uh, GitHub and you can email me if you have any thoughts or questions at chung at linuxfoundation.org. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks so much, Cheryl, for a great informative presentation. Uh, and thanks again to everyone who joined us today. A reminder that the recording and the slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinars page. Uh, we hope everybody has a great day and we look forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.